It's my great pleasure to be in the studio today with Thomas Lammer. He's the Senior Payment Specialist with the World Bank and he's here at ITU to participate in a special workshop on digital financial services. Thomas, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Can you tell me uh, what does the World Bank hope to achieve as part of this new focus group that ITU is going to be setting up around digital financial services? I think one of the key aspects of this fo focus group will be how to leverage digital financial services for financial inclusion. And uh, the World Bank's uh, president, um, Dr. Jim Kim, uh, has uh, set out the target uh, last year that by 2020, there should be universal financial access. Um, what do we mean with universal financial access? It's um, uh, to give transaction accounts to all adults uh, worldwide, because currently, um, depending on uh, different studies, uh, about half of the world's adult population still doesn't have access to a bank account with a regulated financial institution. And in order to achieve this very uh, ambitious objective, uh, to have a universal financial access or transaction accounts to all by 2020, um, as an objective which can also be, uh, can also be uh, realized, um, we think uh, that uh, there are specific foundations necessary. Uh, some, some of these foundations are, of course, a strong political uh, commitment uh, to uh, bring this uh, objective into reality. Another one uh, would be uh, to have a conducive or, let's say, proportionate and uh, neutral uh, legal and regulatory environment. And the last one, and I think this is a specific uh, issue which we would like to look at also in, with in the context of this working group is um, how to uh, leverage uh, and payment infrastructure and the uh, information and communication technology infrastructure uh, to achieve these objectives. It sounds like World Bank's got a quite a lot of experience already working in digital financial services, quite an interesting emerging area. What sort of activities uh, have you already been involved in? So the World Bank uh, as such and the Payment Systems Development Group of the World Bank in specific has been involved uh, in um, more than 120 countries uh, over the past 20 years in kind of implementing uh, payment systems reforms, helping uh, to establish uh, retail payment strategies or national payment strategies as such and to uh, work together um, with the uh, specific countries to improve the efficiency uh, of the payment systems as such. So um, we think that we have uh, quite a lot of experience in payment services uh, and we have uh, also been um, very much involved in um, defining um, uh, also general principles and the uh, general principles for remittances would be one of these examples um, to, uh, to really bring forward uh, the payment systems agenda. So these are aspects which are at our heart uh, and where we try to really um, improve the national payment systems as such and to also look at it from a global perspective, how to improve uh, payment services. Getting the regulatory framework right is going to be very important, I think, in, in, in establishing this as a, a new market. How can the World Bank contribute to ITU's standard setting work uh, for regulators and for the private sector? So the um, World Bank and the Payment Systems Development Group has uh, very good experience with uh, standard setting bodies. Uh, so we have been cooperating uh, uh, for a long period with the uh, Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructure, formerly known as the Committee on Payment and Settlement Systems. And one of these outputs, um, of very successful outputs, as we think, um, were the uh, general principles uh, for remittances, uh, which were published in 2007, and consequently they have been adopted by G8 and G20. Uh, who set the target to reduce remittance prices uh, by five percentage points within five years, so the so-called five by five objective. And um, as a consequence, uh, the, the World Bank uh, has established a global remittance uh, price uh, database, uh, and uh, based on our monitoring, uh, in the meantime, 42.5 billion uh, US dollars have been saved in uh, remittance prices. Uh, so here we can see that um, um, if we kind of establish uh, together with standard setting bodies uh, uh, in the field of remittances, it was the um, uh, Committee on Payment and Market Infrastructures. If we establish general principles, if these principles are then adopted uh, uh, by governments and endorsed also by market participants, that this can really uh, contribute and increase uh, the benefit and efficiency uh, for the individual customer. So one um, aspect I would also like to highlight in this regard is the um, payment aspects uh, for financial inclusion. Um, working group task force we have also recently established uh, together with the CPMI. And within uh, this task force, we are looking specifically on the payment aspects of financial inclusion. So uh, 
I think here um, we also see that um, there uh, might be a lot of um, uh, work which is already going on, and we think uh, that the unique benefit of uh, the ITU focus group is indeed uh, that it brings together the private sector and the public sector. It brings together uh, the financial sector as well as the telecommunication sector, and really it brings together also developing and developed countries. And that we think uh, based on this uh, kind of unique setting, uh, we will also be able to look at this kind of new hybrid uh, developments in the field of payment services, uh, which are uh, of very importance to achieve the gar target to have transaction accounts for all in order to allow people uh, to safely uh, and efficiently send and receive payments and also to uh, store safely money. Thank you. I think the ITU will benefit very much from collaborating with uh, World Bank and uh, with the private sector across this. And I very much thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me.